another rumor that's totally unsubstantiated. The 49ers are supposed to be big players in the wide receiver market. When I read this, I was like, they have no cap space. And the wide receiver unit on the team, I mean, the top three is young and really good. But Kyle was a wide receiver. He loves wide receivers and often does things in free agency that I don't understand. What do you think? You think there'll be big players in the wide receiver market? Nah, I mean, maybe like go get like a, a low price guy, like maybe like a John Ross, right? I'm, I'm all yes. for bringing in someone that bring that has a different element, has yes. a different element to your offense. And the 49ers are missing a couple of things offensively. One, uh, that that just pure speed guy, they've been playing guys like uh, Travis Benjamin, Travis Benjamin. You know? <laughs> and, and it's like, oh, all right, you know, you have a catch here and there, yeah. what, whatever, yeah. but you would like to have someone that is more dynamic and brings a different element, especially if you're going to continue to utilize Debo Samuel in the backfield. So, you know, and I know Debo's kind of split in time. He had more rushes than receptions the last half of the season. Uh, if I'm the 49ers, I'd probably go the draft route and get yeah. a guy who's, you know, cr uh, crosses off a couple boxes, you know, a big, fast field stretcher. The 49ers don't have a dynamic big guy. I know they got Jawan Jennings. He's a terrific or he's a solid big slot. But I would like, you know, somebody a little bit more dynamic that has that size as well, I would go more the draft route than spend money on free agent guys, especially when you yeah. have Ayuk and you have Debo and you have George Kittle, who you not really figuring out exactly how to utilize Kittle to his full potential, but <laughs> that's a whole nother story. And it's like you're just about to give Debo Samuel, what, $25 million a year? He earned it, and then you're already giving Kittle $16 million a year. You forgot how to get him the ball, apparently. Ayuk, you traded up for Ayuk and – he was really good when you decide that he was out of the doghouse. And now you want to bring in someone else who's expensive. I, I got a question for you. What, what? What's up with Kyle and, and how he treats rookies? Like, you know, he, he kind of came out and talked about how mm -hmm. Ayuk, uh, you know, how he started to get out of the doghouse. And then Kyle just openly said, well, I didn't really want to play him last year, but we had no choice because, you know, he there I didn't have anybody else to play. It was just him and Kendrick Bourne. And it was like, well, he still did very well. So it's kind of hard. Sometimes he keeps telling us, oh, this guy's not ready. This guy's not ready. That's what he's telling us. But then you felt like Ayuk wasn't ready. And he had a very solid rookie year. And then he starts this year. Still is pretty productive, even with you not really making him a focal point of the offense. Why is Kyle Shanahan yeah. like that towards rookies? Are the expectations okay. too high? Is he too stubborn? I, I need to kind of ask you, you know, your thoughts on that. I'm going to give you my best guess. And you tell me what you think. I think like we look at Kyle as being progressive. He's cutting edge with his offense. He's kind of cool. Like he's not, he seems like hip and young and with it, but he's very conservative in certain ways. Like he's an extension of his dad and old school coaches didn't trust rookie. You don't play rookies. I think it's just old school. Kyle is more old school than you think. Just because he wears flat brimmed hats and Yeezys doesn't mean that he's not <laughs> thinking like a 70 year old man in certain ways. Cause I know like I'm very close with my dad too. And in certain ways I can think like a 70 year old man sometimes. Cause I'm that in tune with how he did journalism, how he covered things. Like I'm sure Kyle is that way. And I'm sure there's a voice in his head saying he's a freaking rookie. You don't trust him. He's a freaking rookie. And the only time he did was like back when they were awful and had to play all their rookies five years ago and Kittle got in the field. But I think that's how he feels. I don't know. What do you think? Did nah, you have coaches I, like I, that? I agree. Uh, I think not to the extent it's different in the NFL. There's a lot more money on the line. Yeah. So I think, you know, like then me playing in the arena league. And yeah. even then, I think my, my rookie year in the arena league, I was the only rookie and uh, that started. I started every game that year. So, you know, you, yeah. you could see that. Maybe guys just trusted veterans more. But I don't know. Kyle, he's like very – he's very – he like he's very stubborn in the sense of liking things a very 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 specific way, and it's almost like he plays everything for today and nothing for tomorrow. Like there, there's nothing yeah. that he does where he's like, you know what, the the long term benefits of playing this guy right now and getting these hiccups out of him, you know, will benefit me down the Hold line. On, I got he doesn't care about that. Everything is about today. I got another theory. Dante Pettis PTSD. Because Dante was inserted into the lineup right away. He was like, he's going to start. He's really good. He's really good. And Dante never really, you know, could could back it up. And I think Kyle's maybe saying, I don't want to – I don't. I want people to prove it from now on. Maybe he felt – he he took the wrong approach with Dante. What do you think? Yeah. And that could be the case. And you got a lot of guys in the locker room that – Because Dante got know. to play. Yeah. 
He did. He but did. remember, he got hurt and he was kind of in and out. But then he came on strong at the end of the year. Yep. He actually finished he the season. He started week one in Minnesota, then, got a bunch of targets, had a touchdown. Yeah, but then next year was ugly. And I, I remember yeah. the training camp, and I remember standing next to you, just like, what the hell is going on with this dude? Pettis? So maybe Kyle was worried about that happening to Ayuk. But again, I don't think he had to. I think he might have been overly worried there. The, the little I've. I've met Dante. I know Dante sort of. I know Ayuk sort of. They're way different. Yeah. Way different. Ayuk is way more confident and like driven, driven than than Pettis from what I – anyway, Kyle had his 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 uh, his methods. Sean says, Croc, you were a DB. I love Warden Tart. They used to say people are DBs because they can't catch. Tart and Ward drop balls at an all-pro level, LOL. Ward caught his picks this year. He had, he had one in the NFC Championship game. I'm just saying, Tart needed to catch that one. Would you wouldn't Tart do wrong on that last one? Uh just not attack the ball. He kind of waited for it to come to him. He jumped. You, know, you gotta, you know, you gotta go up and go get it. Yeah, go go yeah. attack that with your hands. He was yep. kind of backing away too. Yes, it, it probably would have been a little easier if he would have put his foot in the ground, came forward, then went and got it. But it was like he was falling away while letting it come into yes. his body. Uh, I Sorry. think that's that's a little bit less than ideal way to kind of catch yeah. the ball. And yeah. those are hard sometimes where it's like it's some hard. people will tell you the the, the the plays, even receivers, like the one where you're just wide open and there's nobody around you. You start – all these different things start to go through your head, and maybe that's what oh, happened yeah. with him. That, that was tough. That's a, that's a play. Like you said, he can make in his sleep. And the uh, biggest moment of the season, he he let that slip through his hands. Um, I, I did not – I never played tackle football. But he I made played. that amazing one-handed catch a few great. years ago against the Panthers. Yes, did. You know? <laughs> I played center field, it, JV. And I, I, as a center fielder, the worst feeling is you misjudged it. It's going over your head. Everyone's going to laugh. And I could see he started backpedaling, jumped. He's a, I think he was afraid he misjudged it and it was going to go over his head. That's why they teach you as an as an outfielder, you run back further to where, further than where you think it's going to drop, and you want to be moving in. I think it's the same thing with punt returners too. Like you want to be moving in so that doesn't ever happen to you because it'll happen. I don't know if it ever happened to you playing little you league. Should have caught that like a punt, man. Elbows in. That's what they teach yeah. you. <laughs> Damn, Crocky doing his second show this morning. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do a show every morning, so. Croc's the only one that grinds harder than me, man. He also is like training children to be the next great NFL. Like, he does it all, man. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Ayuk made all pro Diggs look like he was on skates. He, I thought he, I was impressed by that. He did, and and, and Diggs, Diggs hurts himself a little bit. His eyes he's, are so gambles. bad. Yeah, yeah. Ah. He he gambles a lot. He's playing for the picks, so he you know he's gonna give up more, and he's gonna get. He's gonna, there's going to be times where it looks like he's just destroyed in a route because his eyes are so bad. His eyes always go to the quarterback. So that's how he got 11 interceptions, but that's how also how he gave up 1,000 yards. Dude, if Jimmy had just hit Ayuk down the middle in that uh, Dallas game, people would be looking at Ayuk a lot differently right now. Because yeah. he's to me, he, he really stepped up when he was given a chance. Mr. Egotistic Aura says, first off, you're my favorite when it comes to Niner News. Thank you. Second, Tom Brady, guaranteed number six. I mean, you can't say that in football because there's injuries and stuff, but basically, basically. It would Kyle make them the Super Bowl odds. Yeah, I mean, they'd exactly. They'd be the favorites. The favorites. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Kelton says Kyle doesn't want a repeat of his Falcon year one experience. That's why he sits rookies. It's all about his system. It's true, right? He's the guy who says it takes two. It takes a year. It takes a year. So ideally, he wouldn't play anyone in the first year, I guess. 